You know it's fucked up when a country's own security agency decides to kill its president. We have heard of coups and all that, but those are done for power. This was personal. There is a new government tonight in South Korea. Park Chung-hee, who ruled the country for more than 18 years, is dead. Hello folks, today on Behind the Date, we will talk about the murder of Park Chung-hee, the ruthless dictator of South Korea. Why did it happen? Was it really a deliberate execution? What happened to those who killed him? Find answers to all these questions and more right in this video. Park Chung-hee was a South Korean military leader and politician who rose to power in 1961 and served as the nation's president until his assassination in 1979. He is remembered for two things. Number one, transforming South Korea from one of the poorest countries in the world to a major economic powerhouse in the span of only a few decades. And number two, being a very jerk of a leader. Park joined the Korean Liberation Army in 1940 and served in the Chinese Army in World War II. After the war ended, he returned to South Korea and joined the newly formed Korean Army. He rose through the ranks and was appointed Chief of the Army within a decade. And being a chief, he took some advantage because soon after, a coup was staged and Park became President of South Korea in 1961. His presidency was not pretty. As soon as he came into power, declared martial law, and assumed dictatorial powers. Under his rule, freedom of expression and assembly were severely restricted. Political dissent was not tolerated, and those who expressed opposition to the government were often arrested and tortured. This included members of the press, who were subject to censorship and intimidation. In addition, Park Chung-hee's government was responsible for a widespread campaign of human rights abuses against ethnic minorities. This included the forced relocation of Koreans of Chinese descent to rural areas and the forced assimilation of Korean minorities such as the Jeju Islanders. The government also suspended civil liberties and imposed curfews and travel restrictions. This led to widespread political repression and the use of torture and extrajudicial killings. Park Chung-hee's government also vehemently violated the rights of workers. He implemented labor reforms that weakened labor unions and allowed employers to hire and fire workers at will. This led to the exploitation of workers, who were forced to work in dangerous and exploitative conditions. Basically, under his rule, no one was happy. People were abused left, right, and center. Everyone hated him, so much so that his own security agency decided to do something about it. On October 26, 1979, South Korean dictator Park Chung-hee was assassinated by his own intelligence chief, Kim Jae-gyu, while he was attending a dinner at the Blue House, the official residence of the president of South Korea. At the residence, Park and intelligence chief Kim Jae-gyu dramatically argued about various issues happening in Korean society. Even though many tried to subdue the heated arguments, the fight kept escalating. Then suddenly, Kim Jae-gyu left the room announced to his fellow officers that today is the day, went back to the room and shot Park twice in the chest, killing him. Kim Jae-gyu escaped to the nearest KCCA building and took help from the army chief stationed there. During the car ride to KCIA headquarters, Kim mentions the death of Park, and as a result, the army chief, instead of driving to the headquarters, drives towards the army headquarters, as martial law would need to be declared. These were the final moments of independence of Kim Jae-gyu, because as soon as he reached the army base, he was arrested. He later confessed to the crime by stating that he had acted out of a desire to end Park's authoritarian rule and promote democracy in South Korea. This reasoning was later challenged by many critics who believed that the killing was motivated by jealousy as his power with the regime was lessening, or it was an instinctive killing because of the argument that occurred during the dinner. Nevertheless, to his surprise, Kim Jae-gyu was arrested, along with fellow co-conspirators, brutally tortured and hanged by the government. Their deaths, along with the murder of Park, marked a beginning of a new era for Korean society, an era of democracy. The reaction of the South Korean public to the assassination of Park Chung-hee was complex. On the one hand, 
there was widespread shock and grief over the death of a leader who had been in power for over two decades. On the other hand, there was a sense of relief that Park's oppressive rule had ended. The assassination also sparked a wave of political protests and demonstrations across the country, as citizens called for greater freedom and democracy. Many South Koreans saw the assassination as an opportunity to usher in a new era of democracy and human rights. In the short term, the assassination plunged the nation into political turmoil as the military-backed government attempted to maintain control. In the long term, however, the assassination paved the way for the country's transition to democracy. In the economic realm, the assassination of Park Chung-hee had a less direct effect. Park's economic policies had been largely successful and had led to rapid industrialization and growth. However, the country's economic development had also been accompanied by widening inequality and the assassination presented an opportunity to address this issue. The assassination also presented an opportunity to address the growing inequality that had accompanied South Korea's economic development. The legacy of Park Chung-hee and the impact of his assassination continue to shape South Korea to this day. If you are interested in more stories based on conspiracy, then check out how China infiltrated American servers all from chips the size of a rice grain.